study. Uh, so what is up, nerds, gamers, amateur movie critics? I am all of those things, and that is why you are here watching Burke the Nerd. Uh, today I am uh, here to talk about the round two results. And uh, obviously, if you are watching this live or if you're watching this on uh, playback on YouTube, make sure that you leave comments or just discuss here if you're in the chat uh, what you think about these results. Uh, I clearly have my opinions, and I'm going to be going through those. Uh, also, if you haven't yet, uh, if you're watching it on Twitch, I know both of you have followed. Um, but if you haven't followed yet on Twitch, go over and follow on Twitch. Uh, it will enter you into the gift card giveaway uh, for the Steam gift card, which we will be doing uh, the reveal for that, the winner, on April 19th. Uh, so if you're interested in getting involved in that, two easy ways to uh, get entries for that is to follow here on Twitch or to subscribe over on YouTube. Uh, so if you haven't done either of those, go do those. And if you have a different username than whatever your Instagram is, uh, because that's where I'm running the competition, you may want to send me a message or something to let me know it's you uh, so that I know that you're following or subscribing uh, to either of those. That'll just make it a little simpler. Also, um, if you haven't yet, another easy way is just to start voting on the Instagram uh, polls. Obviously, I'm giving a $50 Steam gift card away on April 19th, so make sure you don't miss that. Um, and also, make sure you join uh, on Monday where we will be doing the second part of our live stream talking about the uh, best and ranking the MCU movies. So we've been going through, uh, last Monday, we had our live stream going through the MCU rankings, the best uh, MCU mo uh, movies, uh, going through from worst to best. Uh, me and uh, Mr. Otter, who is always here in the chat, and uh, Mako, uh, who is also always here in the chat. So we were all going through it our own rankings. We obviously have very different opinions. Uh, I feel a little more strongly about mine than uh, they do of theirs, so I'm, I've been arguing uh, with them heavily, uh, which may or may not be entertaining. I don't know. But go back and watch uh, part one on YouTube. It should be premiering as soon as uh, this is done, so you should be able to go over and see that on YouTube as well. Um, and then join us tomorrow, uh, Monday, the 6th of April, so uh, tomorrow to see the part two where we'll be going through the top 10. We did the, the bottom 13, now we're gonna be doing top 10 starting tomorrow. So if you haven't seen that yet, go back and watch it and then join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. on Twitch. All right, uh, now that we've kind of gone through that, I hope you guys are ready for some uh, opinions because we're about to get into uh, our ranking, our uh, round two results. So we're gonna be, honestly, this was an interesting round. I expected it to be, but uh, when I made the, the tournament, bracket i tried to seed it as best as i could and uh just based on like what i thought people thought the power levels were and then the bracket was made from that so so far the seedings have been pretty uh accurate i found people have been ranking pretty similarly to what i'd expect but now it's getting a lot closer uh and so i kind of just wanted to go through and uh break it down and each, uh, each ranking. So obviously there were eight matchups uh, this week. We went through and we voted on Instagram as four posts. And next week will be the uh, five, four, match, four matchups. And then we'll get our final four from there. And I'll do the final four and then the, uh, and then the finals neck at like both next week. And then so we'll have a result by the end of next week. Um, so make sure you're kind of stay in tune for that. It's going to be a fun time doing it. Uh, and we'll start round two tomorrow. So uh, first round is Ronan and Thanos. By the way, let me know if this is big enough. Uh, I can make it bigger. Um, this was, I think, the easiest, one of the easiest matchups to predict. Um, I kind of thought we'd have ran like somebody thinking that Ronan could beat him because we did have, like, if you watched Guardians of the Galaxy, you see that Ronan, like, does try to square up to Thanos, and uh, Thanos obviously doesn't directly uh, fight him, but Ronan, you know, insinuates that he could beat him. He says, like, I'm going to come for you, uh, but that was after him having the Power Stone, so there was a lot to insinuate that, like, the only reason he had that confidence to turn his back against Thanos was because of the Power Stone, which says that, like, He's probably not stronger. Uh, just based on his fighting feats, pretty much prove that. Uh, though we see he does have extreme durability. Um, he takes a blast from uh, rockets like 
the big blaster to uh, to directly to him, uh, point blank. And it doesn't really seem to affect him, even though it was just supposedly could destroy entire ships. Uh, so that tells us that Ronan's a pretty powerful being. Uh, even when the ship does crash to, down to, um, forgive me, I'm forgetting the name of the uh, the city, but it crashes down. His large warship crashes down uh, to the planet, and he doesn't seem, uh, even though the whole Guardians, basically Groot gives his life, uh, to save the rest of the Guardians, who get severely injured anyway. Um, Ronan still seems pretty unhurt uh, by it. He obviously tosses around Drax like nothing, and everyone else seems pretty much have a big issue with him. The only thing that could destroy him was the Power Stone, and the Power Stone itself actually took a long time to destroy him. It wasn't a quick, uh, easy thing to do. So so that tells us that it probably... Uh, he does have extreme durability and strength. Uh, he has a hammer, obviously, that like shoots something i don't even know what it, it is it's like a i don't know if you see him do it he like snaps the one dude's neck by just like it sends like a blast out but compared to thanos i mean there's not a whole lot of situations where he could beat thanos like especially for considering both of them have um just base strength and whatever their given weapons are uh thanos has his ori sword so like the big double bladed sword that looks like uh which by the way uh from the co comics there's a comic strand where uh, Thanos has what's called the Thanos Copter, <laughs> and it's legitimate. This is not a lie. Uh, you can look it up. Thanos has a legitimate helicopter. It's a little, like, two-seater helicopter, um, and he flies around in it, and it kind of looks... People were joking because when it showed the sword in the uh, original trailer, it looks like the blades of the helicopter, and he even spins it like it, so a lot of people were like, is that the blades of the helicopter. So that was just like a funny little, um, information that you didn't need to know. Uh, honestly, I don't think that there's anyone that would have said that Ronan could beat Thanos, but, uh, yes, it is in the comics. You could Google it. It literally will come up. It's like a yellow helicopter. Um, I don't think, I don't know if I can add it on here. Um, yeah, I can't add it, but, uh, if, yeah, if you go Google it, cause it's seriously funny. Uh, once I get, better with uh with streaming and understanding how streamlabs works i'll be able to kind of start putting things in quicker uh but it would take too much time yeah it's ridiculous but it's probably like it's probably the 70s or something and back then the helicopters were i guess a bigger deal i don't know um so anyway i mean not the not surprised uh thanos got 25 out of 25 votes for that round uh, everyone agreed Thanos would beat him. Uh, no competition. What's surprising is what followed, which was the closest matchup we've had yet, and that was the matchup between Abomination. Uh, is this going to work for me? Yes. Okay. Between Abomination and Cole Obsidian. Now, this match was weird because I legitimately didn't know who would win. I feel like each matchup, like, I've spent so much time re-watching the MCU, I've spent so much time talking about it, that each matchup seems pretty clear who's going to win. Um, I, I already kind of have, like, instances to prove why certain people would win in my head. But this one's odd, and the main reason is because if you go back and watch Infinity War and Endgame, the way that most of the MCU, uh, or the way that most of the Black Order, right? Call City and Proxima Midnight, Ebony Maw, um, and uh, Corvus Glaive, right? The way that most of them win or die is by weird, like, um, environmental damage, so to speak. Like, weird, like, uh, niche scenarios, niche win conditions. So it's not like, um, and I always, and I've been saying this to many people, like, each of those four in the Black Order could have been movie, the primary movie villains by themselves in separate solo films, right? Like, Proxima Midnight could have been a Captain America villain and, like, could have ran an entire movie off of it. Um, you know, Ebony Maw could have done an doc entire Doctor Strange movie and been the main villain. Like, um, each of them, Corvus Glaive could have had his own, you know, WandaVision. Like, he could have fought, like, he could have been his own villain, um... And, and Cole Obsidian obviously could have been. And the problem with Cole Obsidian is we see him fight a lot, but 
mainly in the first scene we see him. Okay, so let me give some context for Cole Obsidian. He was our ninth seed. Uh, Abomination was our eighth seed. And Cole Obsidian, in the beginning, he takes on Iron Man, and this is like peak Iron Man, right? Versus, uh, versus, or sorry, and uh, Spider-Man. So we have peak Spider-Man and peak Iron Man versus Cole Obsidian. And Cole Obsidian was destroying both of them to the point where Wong had to come in and teleport him away just to get out of the fight. Like, it wasn't a, we can win this, it's we need to get rid of him. So that's how that fight was, was you know, was ended. Not a, not a normal win condition, right? This is not like a, uh, that's not a definitive they could have won. We don't know that Iron Man and Spider-Man could have won that fight. We don't know it. Uh, it seemed pretty even, and he was juggling both of them. And we know that Iron Man's new armor could probably handle the Hulk, or at least go match up some similar matchup with the Hulk, right? We can insinuate. However, we look at the fight where Cole Obsidian is fighting. Um, Cole Obsidian is fighting uh, Hulkbuster at the end of the movie, and it seemed like he was carrying Hulkbuster for a while. And this is Bruce Banner in the Hulkbuster, who has no idea how to use it, and. Uh, Hulkbuster literally just put the thing on his, the glove on his hand and sent it into the dome and the dome killed him. So I don't know. Like, I think the only thing we can say, like combat ability, we didn't see him fight the Hulk, right? We didn't see him fight like anyone like that. So I'm not entirely sure that if we put him up against the abomination, which is basically a better version of the Hulk, if we're being honest, like if he had more than, he only had five minutes in that movie to learn how to use his powers and he was destroying the Hulk who had had it for years. So it's like not like he would have been better. He would have been stronger than the Hulk, uh, given more time. So I think that abomination versus Cole Obsidian is a tough fight. And that's, and it was reflected pretty easily in the, in the scores because, um, with a score of 13 to 12, the one with the most votes was abomination. And I'm, I think the only way I think I could see Abomination handling Spider Man and Iron Man pretty easily. Um, so I think if we're comparing them, I think they both would do pretty well against those two. What I don't know is the durability of Abomination if it's better than Cold Sitting. I feel like that's what it would come down to. Because uh, if you watch the the Hulk and the Abomination fight in the first Incredible Hulk movie, like Abomination is destroying like Hulk and like with these crazy powerful attacks that should like kill anyone without like extreme regenerative abilities, you know? So it's like, um, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, to me, it seems like the abomination might have the upper hand. I'm, I question the durability of Cole Obsidian. If he gets destroyed by the dome, uh, the dome that's on the, uh, that's covering, um, Wakanda. So I'm not sure about that, but it's a tough fight. So I, I, I could give it to either. I could see either argument. That was one of the first ones that I was like, okay, there's no clear definitive winner. So I was pretty happy with it. Uh, but what do you guys think? Do you think uh, that's a good matchup? Uh, let me know as we're going along if you think that uh, you disagree with something I'm saying or if you have some points that I didn't consider. Um, I'm going to forget things. So let me know. Uh, and I'll just move on to the next one, but I'll come back if you have any comments. Uh, and if you're watching this on playback, let me know in the comments below. Uh, so the next one is Ultron versus Corvus Glaive. That was a weird one. And both, and it's kind of, it was kind of funny because uh, the last matchup was pretty uh, similar types, right? So we had these two like uh, big bodies. And honestly, I didn't do this. I just seeded them how I saw it. And it just so happened that second round, Thanos and Ronan, who had kind of a reputation similarities together, uh, went up against each other. And then we had Cole City and Abomination. They're kind of similar types. And now we have Ultron and Corvus Glaive. And they're not similar types, but they both have similar um, – they both have people to compare to, and, and the person they can compare to is Vision. So both of them have upfront close encounters with Vision, uh, combat encounters, right? What's weird in this situation is the way in which they fought each other. So, so I've always said this. I honestly don't know how skilled of a fighter – 
Corvus Glaive is to me. To, is honestly, I don't think he's. I think he's skilled. Um, I think he's a powerful fighter, but I don't think that's his strong suit. We put him up against Winter Soldier before, and I said I don't think he could beat Winter Soldier um, if Winter Soldier has enough advance notice. And the reason I said that is because if you look at Corvus Glaive, uh, the way he's fought, almost every time that he kills somebody uh, or wins a fight is someone that they didn't see him coming. And so, like, yeah, and so exactly. So I, I agree with you, Snaps. Uh, because basically, like, if you look back, um, by the way, is my chat box in here? Let me know if that's uh Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. It hasn't been showing up in the front. Um, yeah, so I, I think it has to go to Ultron, but I'll, I'll get to why. Uh, because Corvus Glaive is the only person to have basically, like, other than Thanos, kill Vision, essentially. I mean, he did the he did the brunt of the damage to Vision. But let's remember the reason that damage happened is because he snuck up on him, which, granted, takes a lot of skill and ability, um, but he snuck up on him, he got one stab, and basically that stab is, like, what drove that combat. Like, like from the second that Vision got stabbed, he was severely weakened. And that's part of the weapon that Corvus had was that it basically, it, it significantly depowered him from the beginning. He was, because Vision was critically wounded from the beginning, right? So he's he's got, like, he doesn't clearly have the same type of regenerative abilities that uh, other people have, but he does have, like, uh, the ability to phase through things. Um, and I think he does have some regenerative abilities, but not full scale. Uh, so Corvus Glaive, like, destroyed him in the beginning, but I would argue heavily that had Vision seen him coming, he would have won that fight in the beginning. And the only reason Corvus Glaive was doing better since then was because uh, because of that. So, and, the, and another argument to back that up is because if we compare it to Ultron, right, which people said, like, Vision would win, or... Uh, Vision beat Ultron, and I disagree. I don't think that's true. Vision did not beat Ultron. The Avengers beat Ultron with the aid of Vision. Um, and the reason I say that is because we look at Ultron. Ultron is a is a weird exception because we're looking at every other uh, villain, and every other villain we're separating him from their minions, right? But when I look at Ultron, Ultron in Age of Ultron, his drones are not like... They're him, right? And even if you take away his drones, the core one piece, like the core, like developed Ultron uh, in peak form, I think he beats sure, co sure combat ability alone is better than Corvus Glaive. Again, if Corvus Glaive gets the drop on him, sure, he wins. But I, I think for the most part, Ultron takes it. Uh, with or without the drones, which I think the drones are a part of him. Like, I think his Ultron army was him. Because if you see, his consciousness switches between all of them. So he's not, like, the single entity, right? So that's going to be, uh, that's why I kind of give it to him in that. But uh, I would, I, obviously, uh, I'd like to hear if you agree with me. Do you think he, do you think he is all the drones? Or do you think that, like, if you're saying Ultron, you give him one body and it's that? Because, I mean, like, in the comics, it's never that. And in the comics, like, he goes, like, he gets crazy, like, different types of, uh, like, bodies. He takes different forms, uh, which is really cool. And I, honestly, I still hope he comes back. I still hope that Ultron in some way is still around and we can have him as a villain for a new movie. Um, but that's a whole different thing. But anyway, to no surprise, uh, ah, to some surprise, because a lot of people were arguing for Corvus pretty well. Uh, but Ultron got 22 votes. Corvus Glaive got four votes. Um, and so there you have it for the third match up. And we'll go into the fourth. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time saying anything on this because unlike every other matchup that we have seen in here, this matchup has precedence because we've literally seen those two in Thor Ragnarok, they fought, right? I mean, they didn't like directly fight, right? But you could say this, like they were both in the same movie. If Loki could have beaten Hela, Loki would have because they she was destroying them. She was beating up Thor, like Odin Force Thor, like strongest Thor that we've seen almost. Um, she was destroying without effort. 
effortlessly. And Loki loses to Thor consistently. Um, and Loki, if he had been able to beat her in that movie, she would have. Hela was destroying Hulk, Thor, and Loki all together. She could have been an MCU villain, like a, like a Avengers villain if she wanted to be. I argue that if Hela had not died, I, I think she might be able to beat Thanos. I'm not even going to stretch that far. Um, think about this. The MCU, and I, maybe we'll get to this more. And here's the thing. Loki is great, but it's not a popularity contest. And the reality is, like, Loki's awesome, but he's not that powerful. I mean, he's powerful. He beats Captain America. But, uh, no, he doesn't do it. There's, I don't think there's a single win condition for Loki. Not even one. I don't. I don't know if there's even a single win condition uh, where Loki could could win. Uh, I think Hella. I think had Hella not been destroyed, uh, I think if had Hella taken over Asgard, I think that which stone was there? One of the stones was with Asgard, right? Does anyone remember which stone was with Asgard? Was it the Whatever stone Loki had, right? Let's say, for example, Hela killed Loki and took the stone, okay? Had Hela had the stone, and keep in mind, Thanos had stones before, he had two stones when he came to Hela, or came to Asgard. If Hela was there, I don't think that Thanos would have been able to take it. I do not think that Thanos would have been able to take the stone. I think Hela would have stopped him. His crusade would have been over. Or, arguably, Thanos wouldn't have attacked to begin with. Because whether or not he could beat her, like, he'd be like, too much, it's not worth it. It's not, it's too much of a risk. Like, juggling Thor and Thanos. Or, sorry, Thor and uh, Hulk. Which Thanos also did. Um, just an interesting thing, but we'll see. Uh, Loki did get two votes. Hela got 24. Uh... I know that the two Loki votes were just because we love Loki and we want to see him around. But do you want to get him, see him get beat up anymore? You know? It's not, you know, he's out of his league at this point. Um, and so we'll go on to the next one. And the next one is Ego the Living Planet, an entire planet, versus Malekith, the... Uh, he's, got a, he's got a name, I don't remember it. But he's Dark Elf, Dark Elf, right? So, um, and I appreciate that you still believe in Loki, Fluffy Chicken. Um, so Ego the Living Planet is an entire planet. He is a celestial who has created his entire planet. His power source is rooted in his entire planet, right? So the closer he is to his planet, the more powerful he is. Um, obviously being if he's on the planet, he has full control over it. Now, when we meet Ego, um, he has more power than when they fight him in the final scene. So uh, what people don't realize is he splits some of his power. He gets more power from uh, from Peter Quill being there, right? Uh, from Star Lord being there, but uh, he's splitting some of his power with with uh, Peter Quill, which is why uh, Star Lord's able to fight him off so well. Uh, is because they have like similar powers in that movie. Keep in mind, like Peter Quill at the end of that movie is like S tier level superhero. Like he's like. His, his powers there at the end of that movie were, like, on par with, like, Captain Marvel in that movie. He's got ridiculous powers. He lost it at the end, which is a bummer. I was super hoping that he would keep them, but I understand why he didn't. Um, it would have been cool. It would have been really cool, but uh, I understand why. Uh, obviously, it was rooted to his planet as well. But um, So let's put two arguments, right? We have Malekith here, which I realized after watching Thor The Dark World... There's actually a better villain to put in from that movie. I don't remember his name, but he was one of the other dark elves. And basically, uh, they beefed him up with this, like, dark magic. And they gave him, like, this mask. And he basically was, like, destroying people. Uh, almost indestructible, super powerful creature. And he was, like, wrecking Thor, right? Granted, this is early Thor, but he was still wrecking him. Uh, he got beaten by, like, a weird niche scenario uh, again. But still very extremely powerful, uh... Malekith, though, 
we don't see him fight much. He shoots some blasters. Uh, he has on par as Guardian strength. Um, so he's still strong, very strong, uh, undoubtedly strong. Um, maybe like on par with like a Loki level ability, maybe. Um, but his real strength was his team, his army, and he has black hole grenades, which is really cool, uh, which can kill a lot of things, but they're not big enough to destroy an entire planet, right? So we have two scenarios. We have Ego fights uh, Malekith on his home planet, right? On his home planet, there's without a doubt no chance that he can beat him, right? No chance. So let's take it and let's say we throw him on Earth. Because keep in mind, uh, Malekith could literally just like, would just be like destroyed, by like pummeled. Like, it, like there's no way. Like he can't beat an entire planet. Um, let's put him on Earth. Well, we know in the Guardians of the Galaxy 2, we see an entire small town enveloped in a matter of seconds by this like weird like blue stuff right that's also ego he was taking over planets all over the galaxy when he wasn't even there so it doesn't really matter where you're at malekith loses so without a doubt malekith loses however still got three votes three people voted for malekith 17 people voted for Ego. So, surprising votes uh, that people voted for Malekith, but I guess I get it. Um, maybe. And maybe people thought he had the Ether, which the Ether is, like, crazy powerful, too. So, like, having an Infinity Stone could definitely play a role. Um, so, let's go to the next one. This is one of the other weird ones that I wasn't so sure about, uh, and I honestly don't know who would win. And the main thing is, like, main reason is because we don't see a whole lot of what the Supreme Intelligence can do. Uh, in Captain Marvel. Uh, Snap said, yeah, Ego is essentially a god, so no context. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, this one's weird because uh, basically, like, like, Supreme Intelligence is this weird idea, right? I mean, it's like, this is like, this runs the entire Kree Empire, right? So there's an entire empire, um, which, by the way, Ronin is also a Kree, uh, is, is technically Kree, but he has uh, gone off and done his own thing, right? But Supreme Intelligence ran the Kree, right? So the entire government of Kree, um, they are entirely run and governed by uh, Supreme Intelligence. So she just, she's this powerful AI entity that just, like, controls everyone. So obviously very powerful. Um we see her do some things. Uh, she obviously mind controls Captain Marvel, which is super powerful, obviously. Um, she has some feats. I don't know what she could do beyond that. And I think Ebony Maul's intelligence is so high that had he been in a situation where he's being like controlled, like I don't think she could control his mind. I don't think that it would go super well. But this is a toss-up. I think this is purely um, situational. I think if Ebony Maw is in trapped in her little universe, uh, I think Supreme Intelligence wins. Um, I think if Supreme Intelligence does not have Ebony Maw trapped in that, Ebony Maw wipes the floor with Supreme Intelligence. So that kind of like, but I think that's like almost anyone. If almost anyone was trapped in the Supreme Intelligence like world, like that's where she's like all powerful in that. So I think that would be. Clear, but uh, and it was kind of split, so it was about a uh, two thirds split where Supreme Intelligence got seven votes and Ebony Maul got 15 votes. Now, Ebony Maul, I'm like, uh, the thing about Ebony Maul is like he's like a sleeper, like a sleeper pick in this because I still say I don't think we'll get this far, so I'm saying it now. I think that Thanos. I think Ebony Maul might be able to kill Thanos. And I've been thinking about it a lot because, and here's my, here's my reason, okay? Take the beginning of Infinity War. Uh, Ebony Maul, you said, what can Ebony Maul do? Or Supreme Intelligence? Oh, I'll tell you what he can do. So, Ebony Maw 
in the beginning of Infinity War, deflects attacks from Iron Man, Wong, and Doctor Strange. Okay? Completely unaffected. While levitating himself, he wipes the floor with Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange did, could do nothing. In fact, Doctor Strange could have used his Time Stone, right? Think about this, think about this. Doctor Strange used his Time Stone against Dormammu, right? He did not use it against Ebony Maul, which you say is a weakness, or you say is the reason why Ebony Maul won. No, the reason Ebony, Ebony Maul won, or the reason Doctor Strange didn't use it is because Doctor Strange knew the second he used the stone, right? The second he did the spell to reveal it, Ebony Maul would have taken it. Because that's how powerful he realized Ebony Maul was. Ebony Maul, the second he st like started fighting Doctor Strange, was destroying him. Like, if you go back and watch the first scenes of, of Infinity War, destroying Doctor Strange. Like, Doctor Strange could do nothing. He was trying to get away. He was, the whole time, he was just trying to escape. And... Ebony Maul was literally like, I'm just going to do whatever I take. The only reason he didn't kill Doctor uh, Strange instantly, which he would have, and he would have been able to, the only reason he did not kill Doctor Strange off the bat immediately is because he had the Time Stone spell, and he said, if you kill, you know, if I kill you, like, or if you kill me, you won't be able to get rid of it. He's like, if you kill me, you're not going to get the stone. So he was like, that I guess I'm going to have to torture it out of you. And so he captures him, and with Iron Man and Spider-Man on the chase, he still st keeps him, gets him away. And he's standing there just like this the whole time, unaffected, just like standing, like floating on his pile of rocks. And he's just floating around. He was ridiculous in that first movie. Um, so now fast forward, right? You go to the end of Infinity War. Doctor Strange... It's his solo fight with Thanos, right? Thanos has two stones, and Doctor Strange is still matching him for a decent amount of time. Doctor Strange doesn't win, but for a decent amount of time, they were going toe for toe to toe. Like the amount of time it took Thanos with two Infinity Stones, two, three Infinity Stones, three Infinity Stones. Uh, I think it was at that point. The time it took him with three Infinity Stones uh, to beat Doctor Strange was significantly longer than Ebony Maul without any. So we take Ebony Maul base and we take Ebony uh, and Thanos base. I think Ebony Maul wipes the floor with Thanos. I think, I think he could literally send his little like crystal shards that he has in like seconds and like pick him away from every part. I, I think he could. Um, and in fact, the weirdest thing is, like, I think he follows him. I think he respects him as a leader, and I think that's the reason he fights for him. But, like, he is the second to Thanos, right? Like, he's Thanos' is, like, first dude, right? Uh, we don't really see him fight in uh, Endgame, so I don't know exactly uh, how things went there. But the only reason Ebony Maul died is not because of combat, it's because they tricked him once. They tricked him once, and space sucked him in. Thanos just as easily could have had that happen to him. If Thanos was on the ship, and they had the same situation, they could have tricked Thanos too. Right? I mean, they didn't have that situation, but had they been able to, they could have. So, I mean, that's... Like, to me, uh, Ebony Maul might be stronger than Thanos. I'm only making this argument now. I would have waited to make this argument uh, if the tournament had kept, if, if I thought there was a chance they meet up. Uh, but I'm looking at where the bracket's going. I don't think that they're going to have a chance to do it. But uh, let me know if you agree with me. If you're watching now or if you're watching on playback, I'm curious if do you think that uh, Ebony Maul could beat Thanos? Did I convince you? I don't know. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> uh, but that's my argument on it. I honestly, uh, maybe I should make a video on it. Uh, that's just my thought. So then this next fight, uh, we'll move on. So obviously, uh, Ebony Maul moves on to the next round. So we'll see if he has what it takes to keep going. Uh, I don't think he does, but we'll get to it. Next match, uh, and the second to last one, 
is another one that was weird. Uh, I think I should have been more clear starting off. I think some people weren't sure. But the Surtur I'm referring to is Surtur without the Eternal Flame. Okay? And um, the reason I say that is because if you look at Surtur, there's two Surturs in, in Thor Ragnarok. There's the Surtur that we see at the beginning of the movie, the one that Thor goes toe-to-toe with uh, and eventually defeats, right, before fleeing out of that, like, uh, place that was, like, kind of like a hell or something. Um, he defeats Surtur there. And then there's Surtur at the end of the movie where they bring Surtur there just so that he can have the f- eternal flame uh, thing, right? He puts the helm- the eternal flame on thing, and he basically becomes as st- large as... Uh, basically becomes the size of... Um, uh, yeah, the, si- the size of... Um, what's it called? Um, why am I thinking of the name of the city for a second? Asgard. He basically becomes the size of Asgard, right? So I should have been clear because um, I don't know if it would be more interesting to. I mean, we could. It might have been more interesting to make him the, with the Eternal Flame, but the reason I didn't, uh, the reason I chose to do it without the Eternal Flame is because we don't see him do much with the Eternal Flame. Like we see him more in combat with the without the Eternal Flame than we do at the end. We see him like stab through a city so maybe it would have been worth it to do like surter with and without in the bracket i don't know um but regardless surter came out top i think kaecilius with uh if surter has no eternal flame then i think like i think kaecilius like could beat him right because i mean like we look at like thor easily beat uh Thor easily beats Surtur. And Doctor Strange, like, has proven that he can whoop Thor because you see that one scene where he's basically teleporting Thor all around. It's like an end credit scene where he's basically, Thor, like, teleporting Thor around and Thor can't do anything. Like, before Thor can even think, he's being teleported somewhere. So, like, he could be beat, and I think it proves it. By the way, what's up, Darth Pascal? Darth Pascal, good to see you, man. Uh, glad you made it. Uh, we're on the second to last round. I'll be able to go through and show you the results. Uh, basically, so far, the winners have been Thanos, Abomination, Ultron, Hela, Ego, Ebony Maw, which I just made an argument that Ebony Maw can kill Thanos and actually is better than, stronger than Thanos. I just made an argument on that, uh, which I can go through again, but I don't, I think the others don't want to see it. It was kind of brutal. Um, but anyway, uh, Surtur beats Kaecilius 14 votes to th- 7 votes. But I think Kaecilius, honestly, like, Kaecilius, like, was better than base uh, Doctor Strange. He was stronger than base Doctor Strange. Um, after Doc- at the end of Doctor Strange, he was probably a little, he was a little weaker. Uh, that's not considering, not even, uh, not even taking in the Eye of, Eye of Agamotto or anything, like, not even taking the Time Stone into factor. Uh, just a little bit str- uh, weaker than Doctor Strange. Uh, but Doctor Strange is clearly more powerful than Thor, and therefore, if Thor can beat Surtur, uh, we kind of, you can derive it from there, and, and you can see that. I think I think Kaecilius wins most chances. Um, but still an interesting fight, and actually, I'm curious, I could, if, if you guys think it'll be more interesting, I'm all about the interesting matchups, so maybe we should give Surtur the Eternal Flame for the rest of the bracket, I mean, if he's in the final four, or like the final eight, right? Like maybe we give him the Eternal Flame just to make it more interesting. Because at this point, he's going to be going up against like Celestials and like these like crazy like eternal beings. So like maybe we just like give him the Eternal Flame uh, and compare it that way. Do you, let me know in the chat. Do you think I should do that? Yeah, Darth Pascal says power up the enemies in round three. Uh, the only he's really the only one you can power up, right? Because I mean, like, Hela has her powers, right? Uh, they're just based out of Asgard, so I mean, she's the same. Hela's the same. Uh, Ultron, he's just as strong as he normally is, right? He's got his thing. And then uh, Thanos, I don't think we give Thanos the stones. And the reason I say we don't give the Thanos the stones, period, is because like, I don't. They're not. I. They're not a soul identity of his. So like everyone else. Their items are, like, soul identity to them. So, like, if you look at Ego, like, celestial form, like, his planet and stuff, that's him, 
that is him, right? That's his identity. Hella, her powers are based, like, that's her identity. Uh, Ebony Maw, his powers don't really change. That's his identity. Uh, and Dormammu doesn't really change. That's his identity. The only reason he didn't attack Earth, like, there was no power added to him attacking Earth. He just couldn't get to Earth. So that was, like, his reason. Uh, for, like, so that's not really, like, a power-up. It's just giving him access. Uh, but Surtur's Eternal Flame is connected to him. So it's, like, part of him. But when Odin defeated him, if I'm not mistaken, that's how it went. Odin defeated him and then took the Eternal Flame from him, separated him, banished Surtur, and then kept the Eternal Flame. So that's, like, part of Surtur's identity. The only person that wouldn't have, uh, that doesn't have a part of his identity is Thanos. Like, the stones are not a part of his identity. Everyone else has had the stones. They've been tossed around. But the Eternal Flame doesn't really mean much to anyone else. So there's no point in, like, uh... Keeping it from him. So I think, yeah, I mean, what do you think, Snaps, uh, Filthy Chicken? Do you guys think I should add uh, the Eternal Flame? Yeah. Okay. By the way, uh, we've been talking about doing another battle bracket or some sort of bracket following this one. So if you guys have ideas for what brackets you might want to see, let me know because we can just roll right into a new one. Uh, especially because, like, everyone's at home anyway. So having... Um, Having something like this to do is kind of enjoyable, right? So, okay, so we will give them the Eternal Flame. But if you guys have ideas for brackets, anime brackets, we were... Okay, so one of the brackets someone suggested was a Heroes bracket. Uh, and we basically would take uh, the top 16 of different genres. So one of the arguments was like, okay, we'll do uh, an, a super, uh, superhero bracket or like a superhero section, like top 16... Um, video game villains could be super fun. Uh, if I do that, I want your help on it. Uh, cause you'll know better than I would. Um, so maybe like we could do like a heroes battle bracket or a game villains would be fun. Uh, the heroes bracket, what I was thinking is like, we could do like MCU heroes, like, like Marvel superheroes, DC superheroes. And then we could do like anime, uh, like heroes. And then like, um, maybe like sci-fi heroes or something like that. So you could have like, um, or not sci-fi, but, like, just, like, movie superheroes. Like, non the rest of the categories. So I'd make, like, a 64, like, per person. Uh, the, the voting would be a little more dense. So, like, I'd have, like, four, um, four, like, pit thing votes per post, right? Like, if you see now, like, if you go on my Instagram, like, it's two per post. It would be, like, four, maybe. Um, so we can get through it faster. But that could be fun. Another collab. Yeah, dude, that'd be fun. Uh... Marvel superheroes could work. I think, like, I honestly think it could be fun because, like, if we did a Marvel, like, if we did, like, Heroes battle bracket, but it was, like, Marvel, DC, um, but, like, maybe, like, MCU and then, like, DCEU just to make it simpler, or, like, DC, like, movie bracket, like, movie heroes, and then do, like, anime, anime ones and then, like, uh, movie ones, right? Because then you could have, like, over here you could have... Uh, with MCU, all the ones we know from the MCU. Over here, we could have, like, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, uh, Aquaman, stuff like that. Then you could have, like, in the anime one, you could have, like, Goku and Naruto. And um, though anime, you could fill up your own in anime, too. That could be a fun one just to do anime alone. That would be interesting. That would be cool. Um, there's a lot of them. So let's let's keep talking about it. I'll open a dialogue at the end of this, maybe. Uh, put a post out, and we can just start to do it. Just keep your eye out on it. Anyway, we'll go to the last one. Um, there's so many anime heroes. It would be fun. It would be a good one. That would be a really good one. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to the last one. Uh, and that's Dormammu versus the Destroyer. Literally no contest. Destroyer is great. He put up a really bad fight against the first Thor, so he's really not super powerful. Um, Dormammu eats planets. And, yeah, Dormammu wins every single time. There's not a single chance that the Destroyer wins. So, oof. Uh, notice, no surprise, Dormammu got 22 votes 
uh, zero votes for the destroyer. So no surprise, 100% victory. Uh, Darth Pascal also said, also saying his dark side would wreck Thanos even with his little stones. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I'm not as uh, versed with dark uh, with dark side as I should be. Um, maybe I should be, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. With his stones, he can snap everything out of existence. So. I'm not so sure I agree with that, but maybe Dark Side with some MacGuffin of his his own. I don't know. A lot of this comes down to MacGuffins sometimes. Like for Thanos, like his power all comes from like a MacGuffin for the most part. I mean, he's like base strength. He's strong. Like um, base strength. He's stronger than you know Thor, Hulk, uh, Iron Man, Captain America combined. Right? Base strength. Um. But he's not, like, him alone, he's not, like, that, like, he's not, like, all-powerful, like, uh, some of the people in this bracket. So, I think it's going to be interesting. But let's go down, let's go to the, uh, let's reveal the results. So, this is small. I know this is super small. So, if you're having trouble reading it, let me know. I apologize, because I know that is, like, I'm, I want to make it as big as I can. Uh, without completely, maybe if I just like come over here and lean, can you read it? I don't know. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll even like uh, push out. I'm just gonna scoot. I'm gonna scoot over here. What's up? Um, so basically, this is the final bracket, or this is the bracket now, round three. Round three. Uh, again, sorry for how uh, how poorly size this is so you can't see it very well uh but the round three is gonna be interesting uh i think there's gonna be some matchups that i'm not too sure about um could go actually scratch that i'm looking at it and uh i think some of them are gonna be pretty pretty easily decided yeah i think actually i actually think the, the voting for this round is gonna be easier than last round but then i think the voting next round is gonna be harder uh, but so anyway, we got the first matchup here. We have Thanos versus Cole Obsidian. Uh, I think that's going to be one that that seems straightforward. Uh, but we'll get we'll see. Uh, the next one after that is Corvus Glaive against uh, Hella. The third is Ego the Living Planet versus Ebony Maw, which I said could beat Thanos. So maybe he could beat a planet. Uh, <laughs> And the last one is um, is Surtur. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Uh, Thanos versus Abomination. I, I'm not even reading this. I swear I'm not even reading this. I was reading the votes from last round, and that's why I messed up. The, fine, the new matchups are um, Thanos versus Abomination, which is a little different, actually. Um, Hela versus Ultron. That will be an interesting fight. Um, Ego the Living Planet versus Ebony Maul. And Surtur with the Eternal Flame this time. We will do it with the Eternal Flame this time. Versus Dormammu. The Destroyer eats planets for breakfast. <laughs> but Surtur also can destroy a planet with his sword. So, I don't know. That's actually going to be a fun one with Surtur actually having the Eternal Flame. That actually might be a better matchup than I was originally thinking would end up. That would be fun. Can you imagine watching that on the screen? Like, actually seeing, like, Surtur with his Eternal Flame, like, where Hulk's punches barely do anything and he's just, like, holding his sword. Like, that would be something to watch. Feel the chicken says bigger. I don't know what in context to what. But that will be a cool one. And then, then we're into the final four. Then we're in the finals. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be fun. Uh, so I'm really glad you guys came out for this. And I hope you're excited to keep voting. Again, if you're interested in getting the $50 Steam gift card, one of the easiest ways to uh, to put an entry in for that is to sub follow here or subscribe on YouTube. Um, obviously, both at Burke the Nerd. Uh, you can also follow on Instagram. Uh, and every vote counts. You can tag people, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you have a different account name here uh, or on on YouTube versus uh, on Instagram, just send me a message on Instagram to let me know that they're the same. Um, so that way you can kind of like, uh, you don't miss that opportunity for those entries. 
Uh, and I have been tallying those, so I'll uh, maybe I'll put something up to let you guys know uh, what the status is on that. But on April 14th is where we're going to do that reveal. And so that's it for that, and I kind of just want to open it up for uh, maybe we can just kind of start discussions. I don't know. Do you guys have uh, – I kind of might hang out for a little bit. Uh, Darth Pascal, I probably won't play – any games, but uh, right now I might hang out for a little bit if you guys have any questions or if you just have anything you want to talk about. I got a little bit of extra time uh, and I'm excited for the next round. It's gonna be fun. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, what are you guys thinking about this bracket? Do you guys uh, enjoying doing these battle brackets? Is there other things you could you would rather me do? Another thing that I'd also like to ask is I've been doing Monday and Wednesday streams, uh, which by the way, tomorrow's is the top 10 MCU movies ranked. So if you haven't, uh, if you didn't, we just did the, t uh, we did like started at 23, right? Which is all the, t all the Marvel movies. And we went through and we've been ranking them. Um, me, Mr. Otter and Mako have very differing opinions on what those rankings are. Uh, but part one is on YouTube. Uh, it should be premiering just like it probably just premiered like a half hour ago. Uh, so if you want to see that it's on YouTube, uh, and that's the first, uh, that's the top 23, and then uh, we got to top 10. So now we're at the top 10, and that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, go there. But here's the thing. I wanted to ask everybody. Um, obviously, you guys are here because you enjoy watching the stream, hopefully. Um, what I want to move my Wednesday stream to a different day or a different time. Um, I'm looking at potentially moving both Monday and Wednesday streams, but I wanted to get an idea of when would be good to do that. So... Um, for now, I'm going to keep Monday where it is, but the Wednesday, sh Wednesday stream, I've noticed it's been hard for a lot of people to show up. So do you guys have a specific time that would be better for you guys to start um, to, to come out for a stream? Is there a better day that you guys would prefer to see a uh, stream? Uh, and if so, is there certain, t is there certain like uh, themes you'd rather me do? I was doing open mics, but, and where just kind of you guys can come with questions, but I think it's not exactly like, what everyone wants to do right now, maybe they want to just kind of watch as a like watch kind of from the background and just kind of like enjoy the content. Uh, so maybe there's something better I could do with that time. Is there uh, something you'd rather see instead of like an open mic stream? And if so, what's a good day or time that you guys would want to see? For you guys, some direction for you guys for what you want to see, so I can make it uh, kind of built it build it around uh, what you guys want. Hello. We got a new one. Go follow if you haven't followed yet. But what's a good day for you guys? <laughs> Do you guys have a certain day that would work better? Current events. Yeah, so my original intention was to um, to do a topic every uh, Monday on it. And, and like, I felt like it would kind of pull into current events, too. Um, I think current events is hard to stay, stay uh, do long streams for. I want to make sure I'm, like, doing enough time, too. Um, but I could do that. Another thing I was looking at doing is doing movie rewatches. I think it could be fun to like get everyone in a Netflix party and uh, or like Disney plus or something. And maybe just uh, we can watch the movie in sync and I can go over and like make comments and like we can pull out Easter eggs. If we're watching like movies that I've seen before or have like particular interest in um, that could be a fun way to something to do. Uh, I wouldn't be able to stream it on here, but obviously everyone could watch along. Uh, so that's something we could do could be fun, uh, especially while everyone's home for uh because of the virus and everything, that could be an interesting one. Um, another topic, another one I was thinking about doing, and I don't know, um, I'm blanking on it. What was it? Let me research my thought. <laughs> uh, I had thought about a couple things. Um, I, I, I would like to do more fun things, like more fun things like this, right? Because, uh, but my issue with Friday is uh, it's just hard to stick to. Like, I want to be able to do days that I'm positive. I can always do, like, 
consistently, right? And for me, Monday nights are like easily consistent. I can every Monday night be here doing the stream. Um, I worry that if I do a Friday, things will happen on Fridays, right? And then I'll like, because of that, I won't be able to stream. And I just want to make sure that like, I'm always consistent. Thursdays seem like a good day that I could always be consistent about. And uh, that's, that seems a little bit better. Um, because I could, I could always be on a Thursday stream. Um, I could always be on a Wednesday stream, a Tuesday stream, like those I can make work. Um, a Friday, the weekend's hard. And that's why like, I've been doing the Sunday stream. Sundays could be doable. Um, I could start doing Sunday streams. Uh, but I think Fridays would be really hard. Uh, maybe I can do like certain times, like sometimes I'll do Friday streams, but, um, but I think, yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think, I think Fridays would be hard to be consistent. So I don't know. It definitely would be, I mean, it'd be fun. So maybe I'll do some, uh, and should I be like, but I, I think it'd be fun to do like f more like fun topics, right? So there's a bunch of ones I could do. Um, Things like this are fun. I've been having a lot of fun doing the MCU rankings, uh, but I could do something like that for other things. Uh, I wanted to do some more lighthearted stuff. I noticed the past couple weeks I've been doing more like heavy-handed stuff. We talked about like the coronavirus. Uh, we talked about like the streaming wars, which like to me is like they're super fun to talk about, right? But they're also like um, kind of more serious, so to speak. Not that they're like super serious, but they're like more like breaking news and like serious, like this kind of topics versus like. Uh, doing the MCU rankings is like, oh, this is just like lighthearted, fun, like ranking stuff. So that, that to me was like, uh, a breath of fresh air from doing like, like hot topic ones. So maybe I'll start to do a better balance of that. And maybe I can do like what you were saying where I do like current event stuff one day a week. And then I do like fun stuff, like fun, random topics, right? Like MCU rankings or, um, you know, who are the strongest of this thing or like, or, you know, like, um, you know, who would wins and stuff like that. I could start to do that on a weekly basis as well. That might be a more, uh, fun way to structure this. Would you guys be interested in that? And if so, does Thursday seem like a day that you could work with? I know filthy chicken said Thursday is a good day. And then did, is it the boy? Did this thing with the boy symbol. What's the name of those symbols? I don't even know. Thursday could work. So maybe I will move to Thursday. That might be a better day for everybody. Either Thursday or Tuesday, but I feel like Tuesday is too close where it's like you don't want to watch like Monday and then Tuesday and then not see anything. Uh, for the rest of the week. And I do want to do some YouTube content too. So maybe I'll start looking at doing something like that. Um, I'll, I'll keep it open. Uh, I'm not sure. But, uh, and then maybe I'll start doing some just regular game streaming. Do you think like, would it be value? Like, would it be interesting to you guys to just do game streaming too? Like anyone's every once in a while? Or do you prefer like this kind of format? And also that, that was another thing I wanted to ask because uh, recently I've been just doing my video and skipping the games uh, for the not like, and it's and it's kind of felt I I felt like it's been uh, it's been good, but at the same time, playing a game is also like a little more entertaining sometimes. So I don't know. Uh, do you think that's something I should keep doing? Maybe I'll keep my Mondays as like playing a game and doing the topic. I think that's a little more uh, more casual. So maybe I'll do that. Um, yeah, but let me know. All right, I'm probably going to get out of here. Um, I may, if I go on later as possible, I might stream later for games. Uh, so if you don't have notifications on for me, you can turn notifications on on Twitch. It'll let you know when I go live. Um, I'm pretty sure you can do that. Um, so definitely like keep an eye out and then you can do that. But anyway, thank you guys for coming out. And I hope you guys are voting in the brackets uh, on Instagram. So if you guys haven't done that yet, keep voting. Uh, Obviously, it enters you for that giveaway, but it also just, like, has been fun. Uh, and I think next round is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, the round after, it's going to be ridiculous. So, I don't know. 
It's going to be interesting to see it. It's Bobby World. Hey, you're catching us on our way out, but thank you for coming. If you guys haven't yet, uh, go over and follow. So if you can follow on uh, right above, uh, it should be somewhere like above me or below me. No, it's, it's right down there. There's a purple, bluish purple follow. Do that, and that'll help uh, – That'll help notify you when I go live in the future, but it also um, it also helps me uh, because then if I get uh, a certain amount of followers, I'm able to like start putting my own like personal emojis and stuff like that in there, which we're only halfway we're halfway there, by the way. That's pretty cool. Um, I've met almost everything for affiliate status, so if you guys want to keep supporting, this is an awesome way to do it. It's just by following, coming on uh, during the streams and and uh, and commenting. So. Definitely keep coming out. Thank you, guys. And I will see you on the next stream tomorrow, Monday, 6 o'clock every week for our stream. All right. Thank you, and have a good night, guys.